After messing around a bit with the setup I showed in my previous tutorial, I realized that you can use the color data of an image to do something else that's pretty cool. And that is to turn 2D images into 3D objects. So, let me show you how to do it. First, we need a plane with an image. And the easiest way to get that is to use an add-on called Import Images as Planes, which comes pre-packaged with Blender. You just need to enable it in the preferences first. So, with the add-on enabled, you can add an image plane from the regular add menu, which adds a plane with the correct size and aspect ratio, along with the material with the selected image. The image that I'm using is from this free asset pack created by Ghost Pixels, which I got from itch.io, link in description. Before heading into the geometry notes part of the setup, we need to make some adjustments to the material that was added automatically when we added the image plane. So select the image material in the materials tab, and head over to the shading workspace. First I will change the texture interpolation so that the texture looks correct when it's scaled up like this, by changing it from linear to closest in the image texture node. Next we need to change the way that the texture is mapped to the mesh itself. Add a texture coordinate node, and a mapping node. Connect the object output to the vector input of the mapping node. Then connect that node to the vector input of the image texture node. And finally, set the location to 0.5 in the location fields. Now it might look the same as before, but in order for the texture to be aligned properly once we turn the plane into an extruded mesh, we have to set up the material like this. We also need to make one more change to the material, and that is to turn off Show Backface, which is enabled by default when you import images like this. To do this, set the render engine to Eevee if you're not already using that. Then in the Materials tab, under Settings, disable Show Backface. At this point you can change back to Cycles again if you want to use that. Alright, let's move over to Geometry Nodes. With the image plane selected, head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new node tree. The first thing we will do is subdivide the plane to get a better mesh resolution. Then we will delete the parts of the plane that we don't want, which will leave us with a cutout of the object in the image. Add a subdivide mesh node and a delete geometry node, and set it to face. The level of subdivision depends on what image you're using, so you might not need as many as I need for this pixelated image. In my case, I will set the level to 8. Next, we will make a selection for the delete geometry node based on the image itself. Add a position node, a vector math node set to add, an image texture node, and a compare node set to equal. Connect the position node to the add node, and set the second vector to 0.5 in all fields. Then connect it to the vector input of the image texture node. I will explain what the vector math and position nodes are for in a bit. In the drop down of the image texture node, Select the image we imported with the plane, and change the interpolation from linear to closest here as well. Then connect the alpha output to the A input of the equal node, and leave the B value as 0. And finally, connect the result output to the selection input of the delete geometry node. This leaves us with a mesh in the shape of the object in the image, which makes it easier to demonstrate what the vector math and position nodes are for. You see, the vector input of the image texture node is used for UV mapping, just like in a shader. So by doing some vector math on the positional values of the mesh, we can adjust that mapping by adding or subtracting on the X and Y axis to correctly position the texture on the mesh. This is basically the equivalent of what we did in the material with the mapping node. So now that we have a mesh in the correct shape, we can extrude the faces to create some thickness. Add an extrude mesh node, and uncheck the individual checkbox. Add a join geometry node, then duplicate the extrude mesh node and connect it as well.
And finally, add a flip faces node before one of the extrude mesh nodes. The extrude mesh node extrudes faces based on their face normals, so by flipping the faces before one of the extrusions, we can extrude the mesh in both directions at the same time. Next, let's make the extrusions a bit more interesting instead of just flat. Add a map range node and connect the color output of the image texture node to the value input. Then connect the result to the offset scale inputs of both of the extrude mesh nodes. This isn't looking too good, but we can change that by tweaking the map range values. First, I will create a minimum thickness of the mesh by setting the 2 min value to something small. Then I will set a maximum thickness by setting the 2 max value to something small as well. 0.1 in my case. And lastly, I will make it a bit more uniform by decreasing the from max value to something like 0.4. And as a final touch, I will add a Merge by Distance node to clean up any overlapping vertices and decrease the vertex count a bit. If you want sharper edges on the extrusions, you can enable the individual checkboxes, though this creates a lot more faces, so I suggest decreasing the original subdivision level before doing that. Also, if you want to use a custom color for the sides of the extruded mesh, add a new material in the Materials tab and set it to whatever color you want. Then in the node tree, add a set material node and select your new material in the dropdown. To make it so that it's only applied to the sides, add a boolean math node and set it to OR. Connect both the side outputs of the extrude mesh nodes to the boolean inputs. Then connect the boolean output to the selection input of the set material node. A final note in case you're using an image with a white background instead of transparent. Instead of using the alpha output, you can instead use the color output. And instead of 0 in the B field of the compare node, use 1, since the color white is represented by a value of 1 in this context. And if you get weird artifacts like this, you might be able to remove them by adjusting the epsilon value. And there you have it, a geometry node setup to create 3D objects from 2D images. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.